Hey everyone, Docwell here, and welcome to another one of my Dota 2 Hero Guides. Today we're going to be taking a look at Tusk. So Tusk is a very interesting hero. He kind of does a lot of different things. He has a lot of different tools. He has some positioning tools. He has a stun. He has a save. He has very aggressive damage um, in his ultimate and also in another spell where he can be very aggressive in the lane and kind of catch people out, all these kinds of things. He's very unique in that sense. And because of that, he can play almost every single role in the game. He usually is played as a forward position or maybe even an off lane, but recently people have been trying to play this hero mid. They've been playing him even safe lane as a carry, buying Battle Fury and things like that. Um, but we're mainly going to be focusing on the forward position version of the hero, and that's largely because I think that position, the support position from the forward position, is where this hero can really shine and do almost everything that it does. It can save, it can stun, it can do, you know, what it needs to do in that way, but it can get some farm and do a lot of damage and those kinds of things as well. So that's what we're going to be focusing on here. Now, how do you think about Tusk in general? Like, what are his strengths? Well, his strengths are pretty much twofold. One is he's a positioning-based hero that has a save, so you need to make sure you're at the right positions in the fights, that you can save your allies and all these kinds of things, you kind of blink in, snowball on them, and save them if they're getting uh, gone on, stun-locked, all that kind of stuff. And the other thing that he does is he kind of isolates heroes out, he separates them from his team, um, their team, and then he just blows them up, does insane physical damage, and just deletes them from the game. So it just depends how many items you have, you know, how farmed you are to whether you can delete them by yourself or you need some help from your teammates. But regardless, that's his main way of uh, contributing to fights and being a threat in the mid to late game. And even in the laning stage, being very aggressive with his physical damage and catching people out as well. But what are the weaknesses of this hero? Well, this hero, like a posi most positioning-based heroes, are it's kind of a strength and a weakness. Is obviously, you need to position yourself well. You need to be in the right position. You need to be able to save your allies. You need to be able to go on the right targets, all those kinds of things. But at the same time, if you go on the wrong target, you can get caught out in a position that's really weird because of the way the nature of his spells, they kind of force him to go to a certain place. Um, and I'll show you that when we look at the spells. But you can easily be caught out you can easily be surrounded by the enemy and just deleted and blown up these kinds of things so you need to be very very careful and very very picky about your targets and where you are and what you're doing in the game the other thing is this hero is not that great against bkb obviously um, because a lot of his spells and his stuns and these kinds of things are you know they don't pierce magic immunity. Um, I think this is really the only spell that pierces magic immunity. None of these other ones do. So, yes, you can use your ultimate, but other than that, you can't really do much else against magic immunity. Now, the ice wall is pretty good, but other than, you know, it's not the best. So, once, you know, heroes pop BKB, he can't really do much other than save. So, that's one thing that you need to be careful of, kind of playing around BKB, positioning yourself really, really well. Otherwise, this hero is very strong. Does a lot of right-click damage, has a lot of utility, very good hero overall. So, now that we understand Tusk in general, let's take a look at his abilities and see how they work. So now that we understand Tusk in general, we can take a look at his abilities and see how he's able to be that good all-around hero that has a lot of utility, but can also do a significant amount of damage as well. So first, we're going to take a look at Ice Shards. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward ability. Basically, what you can do is you throw out these uh, Ice Shards that go into a certain direction. As you can see, there's a very, very long cast range, so I can actually cast it all the way over there. It has a travel distance, and then it kind of explodes in the area wherever you press it. Let's put free spells on here, and I can press this close um, to me as well, so you basically just decide where you want it to go and then you Sounds can press it in like that direction. And the biggest thing this is used for is not only doing damage, which we can see it does damage to the axe in that direction, but also the big thing is it kind of makes this wall that axe can't go out of. So if axe is standing there and then you ice wall him, you will ice wall him in and then you can kind of, you know, beat him up and, you know, use all your spells on him and isolate him from his team and these kinds of things. So it's yeah. very, very good in that sense. Um, this spell is a little bit weird though in sense of like aiming it um so obviously it has a travel distance all those kinds of things so if axe is like walking somewhere you need to like preemptively put it there so that he you know gets trapped the other weird thing is that it kind of like if you press it a little bit too close to the hero that you're trying to trap it won't trap so there it did it did end up working out that time but you just need to make sure you're not like putting it in a spot that's kind of too weird. Like, you need to really be careful about where you're putting it and really get used to the distance that it's traveling and these kinds of things. Because, like, right where you're clicking it is the very back of it, but it can sometimes get a little finicky. You really need to get a good feel for the positioning so that you're able to trap them in um, with those shards. Because the, the worst thing 
to happen is usually you're chasing somebody, they're low health, and you just like place the shards there, and then it pushes them out or doesn't allow your enemies, uh, or allows your enemies to escape, doesn't allow your allies to actually chase them down, these kinds of things. That can be really, really annoying for you and your team, and it's one of the ways you can actually screw up ganks and mess things up and grief your team with these ice shards. So it's one of those things to be careful with this ability and just in general get used to it and when you throw it out, make sure you're actually doing it where you're going to trap people in a, in a bad spot for them. So that's Ice Charge. Next, we're going to look at Snowball. So Snowball, pretty simple ability, actually. You basically press it on an enemy, and uh, then you turn into a Snowball, and after a short delay, you will kind of launch at them and stun them for a short time and then start attacking them, etc. Now, the thing about this ability is that you can see there's, like, a wind-up time, and the enemy can just, like, do whatever they want in that wind-up time, and then you'll actually, like, go all the way after them. But there is, like, a max distance. So they actually recently buffed the... Uh, buff the distance on this, or buff the speed on this. So, well, let's see if I can even get out of um, the way. I could probably use it, do it with Blink Dagger. That'd be pretty easy. So, basically what I'll do is I'll click Snowball on this. I'll have the axe and I'll blink out of here. And I'll run really far away. And you can see... Actually, didn't I didn't even run far enough for that. That's kind of insane. Let's try it again. It is pretty long distance, don't get me wrong. Um, so, I'll go here. We'll run away. And there we go. You can see that the snowball eventually ended. So it does have a certain duration, and you can outrun it with Blink Dagger and things like that. So keep that in mind. You're not just going to keep going forever and chase the guy into Fountain. Um, the other thing is, is that you can also decide when you click this to click it again, and then you'll immediately start going at them. So it's not like you just have to um, let the full duration happen, and then you use the snowball. So keep that in mind. The other thing that happens is you can actually throw ice shards out while you're winding up. And you can also throw ice shards out while you're on the way. So you can do this and then throw the ice shards out while you're on your way. So you stun them and then you trap them in. You do extra damage, these kinds of things. So you can combo all of this together. So keep that in mind. The last thing that I'll say about Snowball is you can actually bring your allies into it as well. So you can press Snowball and then click on your ally and then you bring them in and then they come with you. So basically this is the way that you can save people. So let's say we have Axe here. He's going to call the other Axe here. So we use this. Well, what I can do is I can click this get Axe in, you know, wait the duration till the call is done, and then I'm there, and now Axe is uh, not called anymore, because I waited the full duration, he's not stunned anymore, and now I snowball in, now we can get on top of him, we can use our spells, etc, etc, so it's a very good way of saving, getting aggressive, you can also just, like, dive people with allies and stuff as well, so it's not just a save, it's also a way to get aggressive with your allies, if they don't have blinks or other things like that, they don't have very much mobility, you can kind of be the mobility for them in snowball there. And next we have Tag Team, the last of his basic abilities, and it's a pretty straightforward ability. Actually, it just does a ton of damage. You can really think about it as just a damage ability. What you do is you click it, and then kind of there's this AoE ice thing, and every time you hit an enemy, they get slowed and they take extra damage. And this is not just for you, it's actually for your allies as well. So I can press this, and in the AoE, when we hit, when both of us hit the guy, it does extra damage. So you can see this does insane damage, and it's really, really effective early on in the game, um, in the laning stage. It's just so hard to deal with a tusk that has tag team up like if you just press tag team and you run at a guy especially at level two when you have ice shards and you trap a guy in the ice shards like it's just so hard for the enemy to deal with that's why at the forward position he can be very effective because he can get a lot of kills he can get a lot of money and be super aggressive and almost transition to another core because there's very few supports and very few carries early on level two three four these kinds of things that can deal with a tag team ice shards tusk plus the offlaner that he's going to be dealing with or laning with as well. They have to deal with all of those spells. It's just so hard to lane against this hero. And that's why this hero is a very much positioning-based hero. Because you can see all of his abilities are positioning-based. This one is positioning-based as well. Because you can't get up close to him or he's going to be able to activate th this and do a ton of damage to you and slow you and all those kinds of things. So keep that in mind. So those are all of his normal abilities. And now we're going to look at Walrus Punch. This is a pretty straightforward ability. Basically, you just click it on the enemy. And you just punch him into the air and do a ton of damage. And then they're slowed for a, a short duration. And this is basically how you're going to be doing a ton of damage. You can see it does a crit. Um, they are in the air, which is basically making them stunned and then they're slowed for a while so it's just kind of a great all-around ability to be super aggressive it also goes through bkb which is very interesting as well so um if we do buy bkb on this guy and we activate it we can actually walrus punch him which is really really good for canceling bkbs or for canceling tps through bkb all this kind of stuff just you know wasting some seconds of their bkb all this kind of thing so keep that in mind very effective in this way and this is the main way you're going to be doing damage as a core role or even as a support you can do a good amount of damage with this as well especially once you start getting more and more items and speaking of items i will actually briefly talk about the ags for this hero because it adds this kick that is absolutely ridiculous ridiculous you can kick 
enemies like across the map. It's kind of insane. So you can kind of like roll in, um, go back because they're stunned, and then kick them in a direction there, which is really ridiculous. Um, actually, yeah, it's a uh, it's vector targeted. Sorry. Um, so basically, you can just once you click it on the guy, you can kind of choose where to kick him. You don't really have to be anywhere specific, and you can actually uh, kick him in that direction. So this is very good for. If you are defending high ground or something like that, or if you're even going high ground, you can, like, snowball in on a guy and then kick him back to your team. Absolutely ridiculous what this can do if you're able to get the Ags. You usually won't get it as forward position. I mean, you can if you're really rich and it's Sounds pretty late game, but you can definitely get this at, as an offlaner, um, these kinds of things, and even from the forward position if you're rich enough. So that's one of the things to mention. Um, and then Shard as well, as on most heroes. Um, it just increases the depth of Ice Shard, which is really not that great. I wouldn't really concern yourself with it. You can see there, it's like longer, so it's harder for them to get out. Um, the other thing is, oops, wrong hero. The other thing is it adds a move slow and damage per second in the Ice Shard, so it's, it's not the greatest thing. It's not the biggest of deal, but it is important. It is pretty good. And actually, what I will mention lastly here is that the talent tree at 25 has 12 percent walrus punch chance so actually let's just level me up to max so i'm level 30 here and i'll get this 12 percent walrus punch chance and we'll refresh the axe there basically now with your right clicks you can just randomly have walrus punch go off if it ever will happen let's see if it ever happens there we go so now i have walrus punch go off and then i can use it again actually as an ability and uh, it doesn't go on cooldown or anything like that and so that's how you can do a ton of damage at level 25 with this hero as well. So that is Tusk. Those are his abilities. That's his ags. Now let's jump into a game and see how he's played. So now we're jumping into a game here of Roger playing Tusk as the four position hero. And the first thing I want to show you actually is before the laning stage. I usually don't talk about runes very often in these guides because a lot of heroes are just kind of whatever about runes, honestly. Like they'll go there if their team wants to go there otherwise they're not going to be super picky about going to runes or not like they're just going to secure the ones that they can secure those kinds of things but tusk is a little bit different tusk is one of these heroes that you almost always want to be super aggressive because all three of your skills are very good in these rune situations your tag team does a ton of damage if you have a bunch of people there and we'll see that he actually doesn't go tag team first he actually goes ice shards first because he has a dazzle in his lane so it's dazzle off lane kind of a weird lane but because of that he's able to get this first blood here because he's basically able to trap the PA in uh, the ice shards and the dazzle is the one with the slow already so there's not really much the PA can do and just ticks down to that slow and the dazzle gets the first blood there very simple very easy um, so he actually does go you know first level in ice shards and we'll see again even before the lane even starts he sees the enigma coming he ends up trapping the enigma and these ice shards and the enigma TPs to the lane like that's crazy value on the level one spell there, um, Ice Shards. And so it's not that you have to go tag team level one every time. Um, you can definitely go Ice Shards. You can even go Snowball if you want to cancel a TP or you want to get on top of somebody. It's definitely possible. It's just I probably wouldn't go Snowball most of the time. It's either tag team or Ice Shards. And Ice Shards is very, very good, especially against certain uh, certain matchups and with certain offlaners. It just kind of depends on whether your offlaner wants to right click. They have a slow, they have a stun, these kinds of things. And you think you can just, you know, kill them with Ice Shards or do you need that tag team extra damage, etc. So. Anyway, that's the kind of level one before the rune, um, before the game even starts kind of thing. Just showing you how aggressive you should be on Tusk in general. So now we'll speed up a little bit. Um, he places some aggressive wards, wards, which is always pretty good on the forward position. But until he gets level two, like he's not going to be doing too much. In fact, the Dazzle actually gets in range of almost dying there because they can get pretty aggressive. It's an enigma with his Eidolons and these kinds of things and the daggers being thrown out by the PA. But uh, now that he has level 2, they have the stun as well with his snowball. So with this healing coming out from the Dazzle, with the aggressive slows and these kinds of things, they're able to get the kill there on the Enigma and even get more aggressive there on the PA. And the positioning ability of the Ice Shards blocks him in and they get a double kill there. So I think that's just really representative of how all three of his spells are so, so good. And you can get very, very aggressive in the laning stage, he actually actually ends up suiciding here. I generally wouldn't recommend doing that in most of your games. I would probably say send more regen, but that is something that you can occasionally do. He does that largely because he's able to... Uh, they don't really get too much gold or experience. So anyway, then he actually TPs mid. The mid is level 4, and he ends up getting the ice shards, uh, making him cast a bunch of spells. 
getting the snowball on him with the last little bit of vision and killing the mid laner with a counter gank there and getting Lena a full bottle and then getting the D ward kind of a bunch of different things high level play from Roger there and that's another thing you can do because you are so aggressive you're so strong early game all three of your spells you see he doesn't even have tag team yet which is still such a great spell because you can chase people down really quickly early game like these two abilities are so good level one level two level three like these positioning abilities are some of the best positioning abilities in the early levels and so because of that you can get super aggressive mid you can get aggressive in your lane so you're really really good at ganking or counter ganking in the mid lane so just keep that in mind so this is like the perfect example of how to play the laning stage with tusk and from here you're going to be doing normal four position things as well he goes to pull the big camp at some points he can test the small camp pulled all these kinds of things just normal four position things but overall really really great example of how to be super aggressive during the laning stage with tusk so I fast forwarded only a couple minutes here because I just wanted to show you this is almost already a transition out of the mid lane because or out of the uh, laning stage because basically the PA had to go jungle already doesn't want to lane there against them too just can't lane so he's be being very aggressive in the jungle if you have a carry like this that just leaves the lane. Don't be scared, especially as a Tusk who's very aggressive, does a lot of damage, can catch people out, then just run after the enemy carry in the jungle. And then this is the other big thing that I wanted to show you. So this is kind of the mid-game, early game transition out of the laning stage, is just being very aggressive on this hero. Because you have your ability to survive with Snowball, look at how aggressive he's being against these three heroes. He didn't know they were there, but the Omni saves him, and then he gets a Snowball out, stuns two, Melina gets a kill, and he backs off, even though he, like, dove tower. Like, that was kind of insane what he just was able to accomplish there with his Tusk, without even being level 6, with no tag team, but just spells in his very good positioning abilities, and you can get very aggressive on this hero. You're also pretty tanky. He has 1,000 HP, he has 6 armor, he has 72 damage. This hero has decent stats all around, and so because of that, you really want to look to get aggressive on the hero, transitioning out of the laning stage into that early game, whether it's defending mid, counter ganking mid, just getting aggressive on the map wherever you can, because that's really the strength of this hero. And like I said earlier in the laning stage, these two positioning abilities and save abilities and survivability, you know, with the snowball, is just unlike really any other heroes in the game are able to have at level 5 this early in the game. All these kinds of things is just so, so hard um, for the enemy to deal with. And look at that, full stick. Also with the uh, fairy fire, he's able to live through this level 7 gank from uh, the void spirit here. He's like wasting so much time. This is just a perfect example of very high level play there. From the uh, from Roger on his tusk, just kind of insane. Look at this high low cooldown spells. He's able to get away. I just want to see him for myself if he's able to get away. He is able to get. Away. So he wastes all of his time, all of his spells, and he's still able to get away. That is the perfect example. That's great tusk play. I don't think. Do I even need to do the rest of the guide, guys? I don't think so because that was just awesome. That was amazing. That was perfect. A perfect example of why tusk can be so so powerful and so annoying to deal with, especially early on in the early stages of the game. Now I fast forwarded about five minutes or so here and I think this is just a perfect example of how to team fight on this hero. He maxed out his first two spells largely because he's kind of putting a lot of emphasis on the positioning abilities and all these kinds of things in this game rather than the damage. I know he thinks he doesn't really need that damage or slow. So this is a great example. They initiate on him and on his dazzle. He ends up taking the dazzle into the snowball to save the dazzle from the stun of the Marcy there and they're able to turn the gank there really really well. Uh, onto the Enigma, he gets his ultimate out on the Enigma, and then he uses his Ice Shards to damage three people, then they realize that, he realizes, you know, the Marcy's gonna get out with the jump, and he actually snowballs three heroes, himself and two other heroes, onto the high ground, uh, Nature's Prophet there, and gets the kill on the Nature's Prophet. Very, very good usage of his spells especially aggressively in these early game team fights. That's exactly what you want to be doing. You want to be looking to kind of save heroes off cooldown. You want to hit multiple heroes in the ice shards, try to position them in a very bad way, um, punish over aggression, all this kind of thing. And then obviously just use your damage ability here, Walrus Punch, whenever you can to either cancel TPs. Um, it goes through BKB, like I said before, so it's very good against BKB targets. Just get that extra damage in these kinds of things. And then the other thing I wanted to show you briefly right here, this is another reason why I chose this clip too, is because you can see how he actually just clears that creep wave really, really quickly. So that's another reason why he actually maxed these two first and didn't even get a point in tag team. I would say at least getting one point in tag team is always worth it. But having these max is also really good because you're able to just clear creep waves with both of these abilities. So that's actually how you can also farm as a core as well. But even from the four position, you're going to be able to use both of those abilities, just clear right through creep waves and get your farm in general as well. So... That's a great example of how to farm and how to do mid-game team fights on Tusk. 
Now the last thing I want to show you here is actually in a different game, it's Wildcard versus Felt, because I was looking for a clip like this. I looked in like 10 replays, I couldn't find a good one. So, um, this is the one that I'm going to be choosing. He doesn't have Blink Dagger yet, and this is the final clip I'm going to show you, because this is the main way. We've been seeing a lot of his aggressive plays, like Roger playing aggressive on Tusk, and how Tusk can be aggressive. And honestly, you get Ags, you get Blink, you get all these aggressive items. This hero is very, very aggressive in a lot of different ways, but there are defensive plays you can make, so this is a perfect example of that as um, a defensive snowball will come out here in a second. He doesn't have Blink yet, but it's even easier to do that with Blink. So we can see here, he TPs, he knows they're going to go on his Razor. He walks up to the Razor, snowballs, immediately gets him in the snowball. The Razor is able to get BKB off and run away. This fight is just secured from there because of that great, great save. And like I said, later on in the game, this is pretty early actually, 16, 17 minutes. But later on in the game, this is even easier as we see... Uh, the Skywrath tried to get that last hit, but he actually doesn't get it. And the Razor ends up getting that kill. Uh, you can see the contribution to this fight and how it was turned completely because of that TP in there. Um, and that save from the Tusk here. And so, like I was saying, it's a lot easier to do this later on in the game with more items. Once you have Blink Dagger and all these other kinds of things, potentially Yules, even if you do go BKB, you usually don't do that as a forward position, but still... It's a lot easier later in the game, and so that's the main way to play Tusk, other than uh, being aggressive. Obviously, there's a lot of times you want to blink in, be aggressive, do a lot of damage, but there are games where there's big ultimates, like the Skywrath Mage ultimate and the stun with DK, or like, um, you know, even like Doom is a good one, although that does last through your snowball. Uh, something like Roar from Beastmaster would probably be a better one. That you want to sit back, if you have like a main core that you want to defend, you want to wait for that initiation from the enemy, jump in, snowball, and save your team, and you can turn the fight just with that single spell and that single play. So, anyway, that's how to play Tusk. I hope you guys enjoyed this guide, and it helps you out altogether. I think it's a great forward position to play. If you're going to play support and you're going to play forward position, I think you can carry games actually with Tusk. He's just that good. So, anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all of those kinds of things if you haven't already. If you like the videos and you like my content, go to my Patreon. Consider supporting me there to see more videos like this into the future. Join the Discord, as always, if you haven't already. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.